Hey everyone, my name is Sean Aish, and I'm going to be presenting a security evaluation of browser-based password managers. Passwords are still the dominant form of authentication on the web, but they have several serious shortcomings. Strong passwords have to be long and random, which makes them hard both to create and to remember as a normal user. Password managers can help users generate strong, unique passwords, but how secure are the password managers themselves? That's the question we're going to be addressing today. We're going to look at three stages of the password manager lifecycle. Password generation, storage, and autofill. So password managers should generate strong, unique passwords. They should store those passwords securely, and then they should autofill those passwords securely into login forms in the browser. We looked at three different types of password managers, standalone apps like KeePass XC, extension-based password managers like LastPass and 1Password, and browser-based password managers like Firefox and Chrome. A few things to keep in mind, app-based password managers like KeePass XC don't automatically sync your passwords across devices. Uh, you have to put your password file uh, on Google Drive or uh, on a USB key in order to transfer it. In contrast, extension-based and browser-based password managers automatically sync your passwords across devices. Also keep in mind that browser-based uh, password managers generally lack support for password generation, and when they do support it, they lack uh, strong configuration options. Browser-based password managers also lack a lockable vault, which means they don't use a true master password. Normally, the master password is used via a key derivation function to create an encryption key that then protects your vault. However, most browser-based password managers don't use a true master password to protect your passwords. Uh, also, extension-based password man managers are the only ones that have assessment tools. And what an assessment tool does is it tells you which of the passwords in your vault are weak um, and which of your accounts may have been compromised. So what we're going to do uh, for each of the three stages of the password manager life, uh, password life cycle is to look at recommended behaviors, so what should the password manager do, and then some of the con security concerns that we found in each stage of the life cycle. Starting with autofill, we recommend that password managers require user interaction before autofilling credentials. This prevents automatic credential scraping as well as increasing the probability that a user can detect if something fishy is going on with a login form. We also believe password managers should refuse to fill forms uh, inside of iframes because this reduces the attack surface. Uh, password managers should also refuse to submit passwords over insecure connections like HTTP or broken HTTPS and they should also avoid uh, filling suspicious forms. Now what we mean by that is if when you save your password a form is being submitted to one address, if uh, when you go to fill your password if that's changed or if something else about the form is changed, the password manager should not uh, fill that form. So a few things to note, Firefox both did not require user interaction and it would fill in uh, cross-origin iframes and we're going to show you an example of why that's really bad here in a second. We also uh, found that only one password in Safari always required user interaction, so hats off to them. And all of the extension-based password managers uh, on desktop refused to fill cross-origin iframes. So here's a demo in Firefox of why it's such a bad idea uh, not to require user interaction, and in particular to combine that uh, with autofilling cross-origin iframes. So what I'm doing right now is showing you the credentials that I've stored here inside Firefox. Here's the code for the website. So you see there's a visible iframe and there's also a hidden iframe. And what you're going to see is that when this website is opened up, the credentials from both websites are going to be automatically stolen with no user interaction. So as you saw there, uh, both of their credentials were stolen. There is a visible iframe right here and an invisible one here. The credentials were automatically stolen. And the reason that's so bad is imagine that you had a hundred invisible iframes with a hundred different websites. You could theoretically clean out someone's password manager in uh, the matter of milliseconds. 
Uh, next, we're going to talk about generation. And so for generation, uh, password generators should create passwords that are resilient against both online and offline attack. Uh, for online resistance, that's 10 to the 6 guesses, and for offline, it's 10 to the 14th. We also believe password managers should preserve safe settings. And what we mean by that is that let's say your password manager has a default length of 20 uh, with letters, symbols, and digits. Well, that's secure. But then let's say uh, to meet a weak password policy, you change your settings to length 8 with only letters and digits. We believe the password manager should restore those default secure settings to prevent you from creating a bunch of weak passwords over and over again. And what we found is that most password managers do not preserve those safe settings. We also found that password managers use very different symbol sets. Um, now, what symbol set you use could impact both security and usability. Um, so this is an area for future research, what symbol set should be used, uh, um, and that changes even depending on what device you're planning to use the password for. We also found these random but weak passwords. So most randomly generated passwords were resilient to both online and offline attack. So generally, uh, passwords were strong. However, a small portion were trivi trivially guessed by brute force attacks. Um, now, with LastPass, they have 17 million users, and based on the data that we found, if each of those users generated one password, uh, 730 weak passwords would be out in the wild. And this is just unacceptable, and I'll show you why. So take a look at some of these weak passwords. This is length 8 from Dashlane. I mean, that <laughs> looks like uh, that's even worse than what someone would come up with themselves, right? Uh, and then we have something like this, Sawyer, it just looks like someone's name. Again, this is randomly generated, but it looks like it's a weak password created by a human. Uh, we have this from uh, 1PasswordX, lots of M's in there. Uh, and then we have uh, Mr. Davis here. So again, these are all randomly generated, but they look like they were created by users, which makes them very easy for password cracking tools to guess. Um, so one way to get rid of uh, this issue is to in increase the minimum length for passwords. So a 10-character password would be resilient to online attacks. It would have none of these weak passwords. Uh, for online resistance, and length 18 would get rid of any of these weak passwords for offline resistance. Another way to fix this issue would be to filter out these weak passwords. The next area we're going to look at, look at is storage, and for storage we recommend a strong master password because the master password represents a single point of failure, a strong key derivation function, and that all metadata should be encrypted a few things that we found, uh, most password managers don't really require a strong master password. The extension-based ones do have uh, rules for their map policies for their master passwords, but we did not consider them particularly strong. We also found that most of the browser-based password managers did not encrypt a lot of metadata, such as URL, username, and creation time, and that Firefox used TripleDes and SHA-1, uh, for very weak. Uh, algorithms there for their key derivation function. To wrap up, we're going to look at some recommendations for password managers and discuss future work. So the three recommendations we have, the major recommendations from each area that we looked at are that password managers should require user interaction for autofill, they should filter weak passwords, these random but weak passwords during generation, and they should have better master password policies for storage. For future work, one major area that we think is going to be very fruitful is browser-supported password managers. So in many cases, autofill could be more secure if browsers did a few things to support password managers. And one example of what they could do is safer autofill. And what this does is the password manager autofills a dummy variable into the a login form instead of the actual password and that dummy variable is replaced on the wire. This prevents the kind of XSS attacks that we showed you with Firefox. We also think research derived character sets would be fruitful because uh, if you think about it you enter passwords on a lot of different devices TVs, iPhones, iPads, and where you're going to enter that password may change what the password should look like. And there are also some questions about which character sets are ideal 
uh, for both usability and security. So how can we balance usability and security with character sets and the way that passwords are generated? We also think HTML supported uh, password generation where the browser has some markup language to tell the password manager uh, what the password policy is and some other things of that nature would be useful. And finally, um, that a lot of these things should be examined on mobile password managers. So how secure are password managers on devices like Android and iOS? We thank you guys so much for joining us. And if you want to reach out, I can be contacted at that, the email address below. Thanks again.